Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. This is Eden, your realtor for life. I do have here uh, a wonderful gentleman, uh, a real estate broker uh, called Vic with me. He specializes with pre-construction. Why don't I do this? Vic, go ahead, please introduce yourself. Absolutely. Um, hello everyone. My name is Vic Walia. I'm actually a broker uh, with Remax Realty Specialist here in Mississauga. Uh, and I'm also a manager pre-construction with Remax Specialist, uh, where I'm responsible for launching some of the great project uh, to the brokerage, which is also a number one brokerage in the Peel region. And that's a little about myself. Very good, excellent. And, and that's how we pretty much started this conversation. You happen to have this amazing prime location, Mississauga pre-construction, which in my opinion would fly next week because you have this project where the builder has slashed the prices 19 percent 20 percent to up to 23 percent so tell us a little bit more about that like i mean um how many units do you have and obviously i want all my clients to get them first so tell us the highlight about this building Absolutely. So this building was actually launched it back in 2019 uh, by a builder called Emblem Development. Uh, right. Now, Emblem Development is a very renowned developer, which has got a portfolio of almost $4.6 billion worth of real estate. Um, and most importantly, they believe in quality, they believe in quality finishes, uh, and they believe in making sure the project is not just sold, the project is sold and finished. And one of those examples of those is this one. They launched it 2019, despite COVID, um, you know, despite all the hiccups, they are pretty much on time by completion of building in 2024. Um, now, when builders sold a project, the builder has no hurry of selling the entire building of let's say three, 400, 500 units in one go. Uh, builder always sell them in phases so that you know they can probably increase the prices because the building is not going to be ready for next four or five years uh, you know at the time of the sale so in this case the builder holds around 24 units which is mostly penthouses and the terrace units which is obviously some of the best layout some of the best views some of the best square footage um, you know, that builder was holding and was expecting, you know, to make a considerable amount of profit from them. But right. then we saw a sudden shift in the market with the interest rate changes happening and happening so drastically. Now, again, builder has a choice to make here. Either they can, you know, hold the prices that they are holding it and, you know, take their own sweet time, wait for a market to recover, uh, you know, and sell it. Or... They can focus on saying that, OK, you know what, we are not going to be making as much money as we thought about. Why don't we make a little money? Right. Because we, the building is almost sold. We are just holding 24 units, but these are some of the best units. So let's make a little bit money rather than making a lot of money. Let's sell them and it becomes an advantage to the prospective buyer. Because there is one thing in real estate that I always say is my popular line, which is I should have bought five years back. But guess what? I can say the same thing in 2029. Exactly. I can say the same thing in 2034. Okay. At the end of the day, real estate was never a short term investment. It's a long term investment. Mm -hmm you always need to find a great opportunity and when you have this opportunity where you have penthouses where you have terraces most of these are over 20 percent as you mentioned you know in terms of the discounts um, that's an amazing opportunity and you can also buy them with only five percent deposit now and five percent at occupancy so i think it's it's a great investment in my opinion yeah, no, uh, as comparing to everything's out there, I find it really, really a great buy. Now, tell me about the maintenance fee. Is it per square fee? Like, is that set yet? That's right. So maintenance fees is always, whenever the builder launches a project, they always give us an anticipated maintenance fee. Uh, mm -hmm. In this case, they have given us an anticipated maintenance fees of approximately 68 cents a square feet. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what it is. Um, mm -hmm. So as of right now, there's no condo corporation in place because obviously the building is not under the occupancy. But once the building will come into the under occupancy, 
the corporation will be there the corporation is always supposed to reevaluate um you know and if there's any changes they're going to come up with but i don't expect anything major to happen in first few years because the building is brand new it's like you know you're buying a brand new car you don't expect much to happen except just to through a regular services um and that's what they already anticipate and that's that's what uh, you know their their basic budgeting is all based out of um so yeah. for the next, uh, i would say 0 to 5 years i don't expect much to change no that that's really excellent now um in terms of hst right right now it's a brand new condo on top of the price he gave us is there hst up, up, applicable no the hst is inclusive of the price the only thing is going to be applicable whether you are a first time home buyer or whether you are um, i should say a principal home buyer or you are an investor That's because right. as an investor you know we get a rebate uh, you know or i should say as a first time home buyer you get a rebate of approximately up to $24000 which you don't get it as an investor so right. if you're an investor what you're supposed to do is at the time of the closing you're going to be paying the money which can be up to 24000 max mm-hmm. uh, then when you have paid that money you have put the unit on lease uh, then along with the lease documents there's a form that lawyer is going to give it to you which is a CRA form you fill those forms you send it to CRA and you'll get your money back within normally 60 to 90 days there's only one condition which is you cannot sell that unit for another one year yeah um, because that's the term of the lease um, right and if you decide to sell it then this hst rebate becomes applicable to you again exactly now it's not the whole amount though right they get no it's a rebate no it's a the whole amount yeah it's a rebate up to awesome. yeah so it can, it can be 16000 it can be 20000 but it cannot exceed more than 24000 that's great that's wonderful so here it is me and you know this is an awesome time to purchase especially with condo i find it at this market now does the fact that they stop the foreign buyers from buying right now factor to this you know situation of the condo prices being so affordable right now not in my personal opinion because really? I, I hate see again you know sometimes we come up with these things that politicians you know really come up with and say there was not enough data to prove that what kind of investment in real estate was happening from foreign buyer okay my best calculation says that at the end of the day it was never more than 2% oh really you think so yeah yes that was my calculation right but again and i i'm just basing it on out of my experience you know i've been selling real estate for 15 years i've been doing pre construction for more than 8 years well um, i guess yeah you're the expert <laughs> but i i'm just going based on my my expertise like right so now the way i look at it is it was never the foreign investors who were speculating it for us the biggest challenge is the cost of the construction the biggest challenge is the development charges the cities are charging um believe it or not i think it was last year january if i correctly remember the city of toronto increased the development charges by more than 40% no media yeah. outlet talked about it now eventually this is all going to come to the consumer mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. premier duck ford went on and said well i am going to increase the minimum wages great you know i i'm i'm not against that but eventually we need to understand that's a cost that's going to come to the employer mm-hmm. the employer mm-hmm. is going to recover that cost by increasing mm-hmm. the cost of the product okay that's, right. that's the only way they can do it right so you know at the end of the day the cost of construction the development charges the red tape that goes into it uh the bylaws that come into action that you can't have a construction truck for more than 8 hours and can't have it on a weekend there are so many factors that attributes to the cost rising up again and again mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. at the end of the day when builder looks at this package and says well if this is the cost i can only afford to sell at this price That's so much yeah because they're also there to make money right yeah, exactly exactly and the other part now i'm going to say is we do talk about it oh well our real estate prices are going so much oh well Toronto is becoming unaffordable well let's talk about the top 20 cities in the world mm-hmm. let's talk about new york which is averaging at 3700 us dollars a square feet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let's talk about hong kong which is averaging around 4200 dollars us 
per square feet. Right, right. Mumbai, Singapore, Chicago. You talk about the top 20 cities of the world and you will see real estate prices and then you're going to find that, oh, well, we are not that expensive. Well, I understand it is not something a common man can afford it, but that's the reality. Yeah, Either you can yeah. watch it or you can become a real estate owner by buying a small property that fits your budget. It may not be your ideal one, mm -hmm. but you will find that ideal one in 10, 15, 20 years from now when you will have the growth in your real estate portfolio. That's how I look at it. Well, you know what? That absolutely makes sense. Now, I'm thinking to my head, the builder is willing to give away 23% right now. What are they thinking of the economy? Like, is there, I don't know, what are your thoughts in terms of when this will turn around? Well, I, I, I you know what, first I'd like to say that builder, when we make a statement that builder is willing to give up to 23%, it, it's not the right statement. I'll put it this way, that mm -hmm. builder has done a costing, which was five years back. Right. They launched a certain percentage of unit at a very nominal, you know, growth. And they were expecting that gradually they will sell more and more unit and they're going to make a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. But when they saw this correction in the market, they realized that this is not going to work for them. Mm -hmm. you know, either you sit on the inventory, sit on the money, mm -hmm. or it's better to bank that money into the bank, you know, even if it is a little less than what they were anticipating or a little more than what they were anticipating in terms of the discount. Right now, the way I look at it right now is this project was launched pre COVID, right? Which means their costing was very different. Mm -hmm. Now it's the post COVID costing, right? Nothing has gone cheaper in the post COVID market, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything has gone expensive. Look at the interest rates. Well, you and me cry about these interest rates on a residential real estate. Guess mm -hmm. what? Commercial, commercial real estate or commercial mortgage rates are way higher. It is, yeah. Then it is, right? Yeah. So eventually, if a builder needs to go to a bank and get the money to fund the project, they are also paying higher. Exactly. So I am not expecting, you know, in my opinion, once the prices will start going down, um, you know, which is the interest rates, uh, then I'm expecting that there's going to be a little bit of correction in the real estate market from where it is now to mm -hmm. a growth. Um, I am not expecting it to be the market of 2020 or 2021, where there was a phenomenal growth of 30% every six months. Mm -hmm. No. Again, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was crazy. And and that's not good for anything. Right. So uh, yeah. the way I look at it is it's the market which is going to go towards the stability mm -hmm. hold your real estate for a few years before it's the right time for you to sell it back again. Yeah, no, that, that absolutely makes sense. By the way, for this prices that you gave me, and by the way, the link is right there for you to look at what we have available right now. Incredible deals. Now, is um, there a parking and locker included with that? Parking is locker, no. Locker okay. is an additional charge of $5,000, but okay. parking is included in the purchase. Get a parking with that. And most importantly, Mm -hmm. We have also managed to cap the development charges at zero. Yeah, I like that. Right. So which That's means awesome. you cannot expect any hidden charges to come at the time of closing. That's right. So it would be just like a resale uh, cost, right? A resale. Pretty much. Pretty much. There's going to be a little bit extra, but not mm -hmm. by huge. And again, your lawyers can help you review that agreement and give you an idea on that. Right. The cost of the closing cost. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's really important because again, we're selling it this weekend. We just want to know upfront, uh, and it would be on the builder form, right? Yes, this, uh, yes. This everything yeah. the sales is going to happen on the builder form, which means you also get ten days of recession period, uh, which means you can review the contract with your lawyers, and if there's any concern, you can bring it back on the table, or you can walk out of the deal if you think it's not the right fit for you, uh, but. As far as our due diligence is concerned, we have done everything that we can do within our power as a salesperson, um, you know, to make sure that we're bringing the best possible deal um, to your clients. Uh, and you are one of the lucky few ones because you got an opportunity to even talk about this before it hits on MLS, which is going That's to be right. on Tuesday. Yeah, I like that. 
Yeah, like Tuesday it's going to be hitting on MLS. <laughs> so that, that is really good. So no, um, like as I say, it's the link below. Have a look at it. You'll be. I mean, there's only a few as well, right? So whoever be able to pick the best one, it's just first come first serve. That's that's the way you're going to be doing it, right? That's correct. First come first serve. Once the unit is gone, it's gone. Excellent. So do you have any other project that you recommend right now? Like any other stuff that you're working on? That would be available anywhere in GTA? Absolutely. Pre-construction industry, um, you know, I, and again, you know, it varies from case to case. It varies from client to client. But I have some other amazing projects. Uh, for example, if I talk about uh, downtown Toronto, um, you know, we have an uh, access to Q Towers, which is happening at 200 Queen's Key West. Um, as you know, 200 Queen's Key is one of the most prime areas of, you know, Toronto's central downtown because one side you have CN Tower and another side you have Lake. So you are going to buy a unit either with a direct view of a CN Tower or you're going to buy a unit with a direct view of Lake. There is right. nothing, you know, there's no other option that is available to you in right. terms of, you know, North and South. Um, then we have a project from Minto Homes uh, called West Shore, um, you know, which is uh, towards the West, um, you know, or uh, of Missaga, you know, uh, that's another great project. It's a project of stacked town homes. Um, they have only launched, uh, you know, few blocks right now. They have few more blocks that they will be launching very soon. So we have an inventory in the first launch, uh, and then we will be doing a launch of uh, the few more blocks very soon. Um, then we also have projects. If you are looking for a West, uh, which is in Milton, uh, we have Matmi Homes. We have a Milan Creek. Uh, we also have Batme Homes, uh, you know, uh, another brought another project called Bully Bullyward Q uh, in, in Toronto. Uh, now, here is another part that I wanted to make sure that your investors understand. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer of one thing. Wherever the government invests the money, I want to follow the path there. Mississauga, they invested LRT. Hamilton, they invested $4 billion, almost $4 billion worth of money towards LRT. Now the government is investing $19 billion in the new Ontario line that's going to be running from Exhibition Place to the East Harbour. So now when I already know that government is investing so much money in the infrastructure, then what do I expect? I expect the model of real estate will change around that infrastructure. And new buildings will pop up. Developers already owns the land. They are sitting on it. They're finding it right time for them to pop up. So why not I buy it now when the things are either under construction or just launched? For example, the Ontario line or this Cooksville LRT, because you are only for the project that we just talked about, Art Form. You are steps away from the Cooksville LRT, which is going to be function in almost in what 2025, if I correctly remember, uh, all the way from Brampton to Lakeshore. That like 80 percent of the line is already complete. Awesome. Uh, so when we are looking at these kind of government money invested, if we follow that, I think there is a good reason to believe that we are going to great, uh, get a growth out of it. I totally agree. And that's an amazing information. Here's what I recommend. If you are interested in taking advantage, snatching this 15 units that we have available, reach out to me ASAP. And also for all these other great projects that Vic is talking to us about, what we're going to do is have a small seminar for whoever you are interested. So Vic, would you be willing to set up a time that works for both my clients and yourself for you to go ahead and educate us with all this great uh, pre-construction projects you have available? Absolutely. In fact, I'm going to make it easy for you. Sure. We'll fix up a time with your clients and whatever it is, I'll be there. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And before I say goodbye, any other stuff that you want to say or conclude? No, uh, there's only one thing I'm going to say to you. Um, I've been doing this for, you know, more than 15 years. And my right. own reputation is way more important to me uh, than just trying to sell a unit. I will never, never bring a project forward to either your client or my client unless I am confident of the investment. Okay. Right. Right. Now, can the real estate prices go up and down? Absolutely. Do we know the future? No. But there is only one thing that I know about real estate, which is you need to have a strong holding power. 
Look at the 1990s crash, you know, look at the 1990s. Everybody who were able to hold the, you know, the real estate in 1990s, finally they started going back up again in 2000. So exactly. the way my understanding of real estate is every 10 year, the prices are going to be up. In the 10 years, there's going to be up and down. That's so right. make sure you have a holding power. And if you do hold your real estate for the right time to sell it, there is no reason why you should not be making money. Absolutely perfect. And, and like, as I said, there's a talk that says, oh, this is not the time to buy. It's too much interest rate. Remember again, if you are the few that are buying when everybody's selling, you'll get ahead of the, the game. In the long run, sooner or later, real estate would appreciate because everybody needs a home to live in. So thank you so much, Vic. I really, really appreciate your time. I'm looking forward to having that seminar with you. In the meantime, this weekend, we're gonna get so busy selling the students you have. Great, thanks a lot. All right, reach out to us. Thank you so much. You take care, have a great weekend. Take care, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.